Hello, welcome back. I'm Dragon Sage, and welcome back to our Let's Play of For Honor. Um, yeah, let's just dive back into it, shall we? The time came to show the Vikings who they really were. We would strike deep into the heart of their lands. But first, we needed to cross the mountain pass. And Hold and Cross would lead the charge. Oh, fine. This is the. Okay, this isn't the bad one then. The bad one, I was. There's a. This is the first level where in which you actually switch up and play someone. Play as other knights. I think I've, I may have said it in the previous episode, but basically every time. For each faction, you play. You actually play at least three out of the playable factions. Well, three. Uh, three, uh, three heroes. Because, yeah, uh, as of recording this, they just released the DLC. Not DLC, yeah, the, the essentially DLC for the new rate, new heroes. <clears throat> yeah, this is the one that might give me a little bit of trouble. Well, not this one. This this one wasn't the bad one. The really bad one was the one where I was playing, um, what do you call it? The Peacekeeper from the Knights. So many spoilers. You play the PK. You eventually do play a peacekeeper in the Flora campaign. The snow was already falling on Valkenheim, but we went anyway. I am Holden Cross. As commander of the Blackstone Vanguard, it fell to me uh, it's too to quiet. lead the way. So yeah, this is an, I believe, an executioner? I forget, I honestly forget what they're called. And I forget every time. Exactly what we have been hoping for. I want to say executioner, but uh, lawkeeper. And I also forget. But these, uh, I always have so much of a difficulty finding these things in like in the action multiplayer. Not because of, not because they're, they're difficult to fight or anything, but specifically they have like one move, whereas like they ram into you. They will ram into you with their um. With their halberd. And once you've ran, once you've been rammed, there isn't anything you can do about it. They know we're here. Keep moving. If I was, um, I don't know, I might actually, uh, maybe I should have actually looked up the, the move list for them. So I can actually show the move, but, you know, whatever. I might do that in, like, a post-credit thing. Like, right, like, right before you see the, the, the exorbitant walls and breakables. Yeah, but it's basically like the Viking uh, Raiders have that. Wow. God. Now, some of you probably some some of you are probably thinking that like why don't I just get my stamina back so I can you know do whatever. But I'm um, trying to actually get execution on them. Is if you get execution, you get instant you instantly get all uh, a little bit of health back and some stamina back. Why is he able to block instantly when stunned? There. God, that was frustrating because he kept. It's like, doesn't didn't matter if he was stunned or not. He just instantly was able to block everything. Oh, these are my guys. What am I doing? Uh, 
I think I may have mentioned it, but like, um, you cannot, like, if someone, if they're in the middle of a heavy attack, there's like a, if they're already in the attack, you cannot, like, guard break them out of it, which is kind of dumb, because you're still ramming your body against theirs. Protect the calm! Yeah, which is kind of weird. Like you're still like throwing the weight of your body against theirs. The to so like you would still interrupt them if this was realistic, but you know whatever. Was is like it's but it's real. Like no, you're doing the thing, so no. Yeah, this is where it teaches you the parry. But yeah, that, that was a move just there, where he basically would ram his pole arm into the enemy and run in, and just do a straight run. I think if I, if I had more space, or maybe I did it slightly wrong, but basically you can just take their opponent and just throw them like a, well across the map. Those catapults needed to be shut down. Yeah, I like how, like, you know, they're savages, but, you know, they have the technology to use, you know, they, they're smart enough to use catapults. They're, they're not as savage as you think they are. Okay, so this is the part where, like, it was just my only option. well, but yeah, this is basically where I, um, where I start having these difficulties, because fighting on ice against a Viking while wearing full plate armor. Might not be the smartest option. Oh. This might be this might be a dumb thing because I might die this round. Nope, I died. Congratulations! I think this is the first death on the um, let's play, Those and it's because to be I was fighting on ice. But yeah, this is uh, the first. I think this is like the first time in like, my personal let's play, personal playthrough, it wasn't a good where, plan, where I just died just repeatedly. It's because like, oh, it wasn't because I was losing to the fight. It was because you know ice was breaking underneath, and I couldn't really do anything about it. Just throw them into the ice. Just throw them into the convenient place water. I need to take out that catapult. Come on, do a thing. Don't just guard, you dick. Stop guarding and actually attack me so I can parry you! Shut down those catapults. Job's done. Yeah, so I think that's how you do the moves. Like it's like you essentially just parry them. You, you parry them and you instantly do a heavy attack on them, All right, rather than parry, and then you'll instantly just impale them. Look, break this. Again, how... I look at some of these and I wonder, like, how the hell did I miss them the first time around? Again, fighting Vikings on breaking ice. This seems like a perfectly good idea. Let's just get off the ice.
these ones are fine. It's like there's there's I think there's one coming up where it's like no, you cannot get off the ice. You have to you have to fight them on the ice. Nice. I'll give this yeah, to the Vic. The... Yes, you already taught me how to parry. <laughs> yeah, this is the one where it's like, no, you cannot actually. Or coming up in the ice. It's the one where it's like, no, you, you have to fight on the ice. There's no there's no choice. And I think and I kept dying on it, and the only reason why I got past it is because like I technically killed the guy during um like half I technically already killed the guys until it proc the checkpoint, so it just moved me to the to the proper place. Actually, can I no, I can't. Can, I'm gonna cheese it out and try to keep him on the ice, so it breaks on him. Oh, there's a missing rifle. I think I may have just broke the game. No, wait, there's a way back. Oh, so that just breaks instantly on his own. Awesome. That's for one thing I, I legitimately thought, like, oh wait, I think I broke the game because I locked him on that slide and I can't get to it. Yes, I'm aware I'm running past his own breakables, but whatever, I'll we'll get those. Get those there. We were prepared for this place. Fire! Hey, where am I going? Try a bridge that isn't full. Was procking me for something else, but I don't know. Yeah. The Vikings had numbers. We had technology. Kind of interesting technology. I feel like if this was realistic, then they would actually just push me off the bridge right now. Move set. Like, nope, I'm not going to pull this moose off up right now. That gets an opponent that basically blocks every single thing I hit at him, so it prevents me from actually doing a combo. Ooh, 
the bridge controls. He uh, shield users. Couldn't leave a force behind to guard the prisoners. This beast killed at least 40 soldiers, including Davis. Do you know how to tell a predator from prey? You can't, of course, unless you see them in war. Well done. I had thought that her laws of selection only applied to us. So yeah, that goes along with what I said in the last episode, where she... Where Apollyon basically will choose people who are tally based off or who she will she will spare you if if you're an enemy that proves to be like oh you're pretty damn strong and you're you're and you just refuse to die and are willing to basically do anything to achieve like goals or whatever. She's she's pretty interesting. And again, I'll, I'll go further in detail. Like once I, once we finish this chapter, then I will have like a, you know, a fair amount to talk about her life because she's actually a pretty interesting character and her philosophy. And I said like it's actually the philosophy. It's not entirely wrong, but you know. So I guess that's it for this episode. Um, please. Uh, thumbs up my video, like, subscribe if you enjoy my content, and please leave a comment down below and and tell me what you like about the video, or tell me where I could tell me where I can improve if you don't like it. But yeah, until then, see you. So many of my people fear the decorations of our savage foes. 
But I have never feared the demons of my enemies. I am their demon. The Vikings are ancient as we are. The difference is, they vanished for centuries. We never left. But any who doubt their claim to these lands need only look at the ruins their ancestors built for them. Wherever we go, the peaceful life that is called civilization scatters. It is a social agreement that is so easily dissolved. Fragile. The Vikings have filled their mountains and valleys with horns and drums and signal fires. We were never going to slip into Valkenheim unnoticed. That is why I chose to enter through the front door. The Cataclysm was not one event, it was many. Lands rose and fell. The sky rained fire, ash and worse things. The seas rose and then retreated. It is a miracle that any of us are still here. It's cold. Our technology is what separates us from the Vikings. And with these, we would make the so-called impassable defense of the gates of Valkenheim meaningless. Should I have given your warden command of this assault? Go! I am Apollyon. I was a warden once. Now I have become something greater. I am the eighth warlord of the Blackstone Legion. The only one strong enough to survive. And through me, this land will see a new age. The Vikings have raided every year for as long as I can remember. They sack, loot, burn. My village was destroyed by them. Mine and hundreds of others. Now, we would turn the tables. Valkenheim, home of the invaders who call themselves Vikings. It had been 40 years ago that knights last crossed the threshold into that great valley. Whatever happened in there, we would certainly be remembered. The ancient kings of the Vikings were mighty. They sailed across the ocean and when the seas froze, they were lost to history. And then, they came back. 